I want my come. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone who teach and rule well. And Shalom to the sincere Akiam, Spanish truth and sincerity. Shalom. So, in this video, you know, I want to go into James, you know, chapter 1. I actually want to start off at the second verse. Because in this topic, I want to talk about, you know, temptation. You know, the, um, the temptations that we experience within this truth. As we, you know, try to follow Yahweh Bashem Shai, you know, to the best of our ability, man. And, you know, how these trials, tribulations, temptations, which basically that's all synonymous with one another, always leave us... You know, with, with, with basically two options, man. You know, we can we can make the right decision and we can make the wrong decision, man. And that's actually what I want to go into, you know, in this video. You know, which is the temptation and the decisions that we make. Or that we, you know, have to try to make to the best of our abilities, man. So this is James chapter 1 and verse 2, my brethren. Count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. So, actually, we should be happy that we're being tried and tested. You know, if we look up the word temptation, and, you know, I have my other phone here with me. So, uh, if you want to follow it yourself, you know, go to the online etymology and look up the word temptation. It uh, says, 12th century, active enticing someone to sin. An experience or state of being tempted. It says, um, uh, noun of action from past participle, stem of temptare, to feel, to try out. <clears throat> that which tempts a person. So, we're being put in situations, and... These situations, you know, try to entice us, you know, to 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 make evil decisions. You know, that's why the scripture also says that the spirit is warring against the flesh. You know, and um, let me grab it as well. <clears throat> Or that's contrary. Let me see which one it is. <coughs> this is Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. For the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. <coughs> so the flesh. You know, wants to do a certain thing, but we know according, you know, to the understanding of the scriptures, you know, what is the right way, you know, to react in certain situations that we put in, man. <clears throat> and those are the temptations and trials that we, uh, we are being put in, you know, to test and try our faith. You know, <clears throat> if you, for instance, lose your house in the flesh, you know, you want to go buck wild, man. You know, you want to go buck wild, you know, and um, you get angry, you get vexed, you know. But in the spirit, you know, we understand that these things, you know, might be us, man. You know, so it's always this battle between the flesh that wants to react in a certain way and how we according, you know, to the understanding of the scriptures, you know, according to the spirit, you know, how we should react. Or, you know, how we should approach these situations that we're put in. You see, so because these these two always have a fight with one another. You know, it doesn't matter in which situations we put in. You know, you sometimes, you know, make the decision that you should not, you know, do, man. And then you, you know what's right, but you don't do the, do the correct thing. So that's why it says so that you cannot do the things that you would. You know, because you're very desirous to do the right thing, 
but the flesh is weighing us down. You know, the flesh might get, you know, get us so tired, man. You know, that we, you know, become irritated and vexed. So that we, you know, don't react in the right manner. <clears throat> um, Apostle Paul also spoke about that in the book of Romans. <clears throat> Let me see if I can find it. Um... That's that's why YouTube is so beautiful, man. You know, Kahaloi Habashmi Yashai. This is Romans chapter 7. <clears throat> this is Romans chapter 7, verse 18. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For the will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. Yeah, so Apostle Paul himself said that, you know, when he is being tempted, when he is in situations, you know, which he's supposed to do right, you know, he, he eventually, you know, has troubles with that, man. Because he understands that in his flesh dwells no good thing. You know, the, the, the flesh that we have, you know, the tendency to do evil is that evil seed that was planted in Adam. And that's why we have that uh, um, that heart of malignity, man. The tendency to do evil. It's just within our flesh. Because truth be told, that's the easier thing to do. You know? It says, for to will is present with me. Yeah, he, he, he wants to do that. You know, that, that's what is within him. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. You see? So, <clears throat> he knows... What the right decision and right way would be. But the flesh is pressing him down man. So he's not doing that which he should be doing. Verse 20. Now if I do that I would not. It is no more I that do it. But sin that dwelleth in me. You see. So he, he understands what's going on. But it is just the flesh. That has the tendency to do evil. You know that is overtaking him in those situations. Verse, uh, verse 21, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. You see, because Apostle Paul understood that the law is good, man. But we are just, you know, imperfect, you know, at the moment. Verse 22, for I delight in the law of the Most High after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. Yeah, so he, he knows he knows what is the right thing to do. But his body is fighting against it and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? You see? I thank the Most High through Yahweh Shai Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of the Most High, but with the flesh the law of sin. You see, so that's why we are, you know, trying to do the right thing to the best of our abilities, man, because the Heavenly Father, you know, knows that, you know, we are imperfect. You know, we can't keep the law. Therefore, Yahweh Shai was also sent forth to take away our sins, so that whatever we do, you know, whatever happens, whatever the decisions are that we make. You know, um, unwillingly, Yahweh Shai, you know, is um, is blotting them out, man. You see? So this is James chapter 1. And um, first to again, my brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. You know, the trials and tribulations, you know, those are good things, you know. Why? Because we're being tested, we're being refined. Verse 3, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work at patience. So we're being put in situations and our faith is being tested. You know, do you believe in the Most High? You know, do you believe, you know, that no matter what you go through, that the Heavenly Father has got your back? You know, um, 
do you believe in the most high that you know you won't um commit adultery on purpose for instance you know do you believe that you're going to be chastised for that if you do it you know willingly you know if you're aware of what you're actually doing you know there have been cases in which brothers you know, have been lied towards by these females telling them that they have no man. You know, in those situations, you know, then the woman is lying towards the brother, man. Then the situation that occurred, then the faith of that brother is going to be tested. You know, the Most High, is he going to forgive me? You know, your Jazah, he will. You know, because I was not aware of the situation that actually occurred. You know, and I believe in Yahweh Shai for taking away my sins. You see, that's why the scripture says he that condemns himself is condemned already. You know, if you already <clears throat> condemn yourself or destroy yourself or judge yourself on worthy in situations, then, yeah, then, you're, then, then you're basically messing with your own mind. You know, but if you don't condemn yourself in these situations, then you understand the love of the Most High towards us, man. Then you believe that the Heavenly Father is taking away every wrongdoings of you, man. You know, true our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. You see? But it says in James chapter 1, verse 3, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work in patience. So a certain process is also being started and is taking place, you know, when we're being tried. You know, it, it, the patience, if you look that up, I'm going to also look it up in the online etymology dictionary. <clears throat> It says, the quality of being willing to bear adversities. It says, calm endurance of misfortune, suffering, patience, sufferance, permission. It says, uh, the quality of suffering or enduring, submission. And eventually the word patience, you know, goes also into um, becoming harder, becoming stronger, becoming better. It says, to endure, undergo, or experience. So... It says quiet or calmness in waiting for something to happen. So patience, you know, has a lot of, you know, different meanings that we can uh, speak about. But it all goes into, you know, you bearing that which is happening unto you. You allow it to happen. You suffer it. You become better out of the situation. You gain experience. You become stronger. The situation that... You know, you was in shaped you so that it won't affect you no more like it used to. You see? First of all, but that patience have her perfect work. Yeah, so the process that we go into to be molded into a better man after we went through these trials and tribulations, you know, it should, you know, uh, build us up towards perfection because we're supposed to have a different mindset, you know, than the world has. But these things, slowly but surely, you know, are being refined within us, you see. And it's happening through the temptations that we go through. It says that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Yeah, so that you're not going to be, you know, desirous, but, you know, you're going to be a man in the spirit <clears throat> that understands that you know, you're going to have your daily bread. You know, it might be that the most that blesses you with more money, but then you also know how to put the money to good use for the brothers. You know, um, it says, um, <clears throat> let me jump down to verse 12. Blessed is the man that endure temptation. So, the patience that we receive through the trials and tribulation, you know, you know, helps us endure whatever we're being put through. You know, those are all trials, tests, to test our faith, to test our beliefs. You know, but it says, blessed is the man that endure temptation. So, it's just like saying, he that believeth, or he that endured to the end, the same shall be saved. You know, that's basically what this goes in because we have to endure all the temptations that are being put in our life, man. It says, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. You know, and 
that is what we're going to receive once Yahweh Shai comes back. You know, it's not a given yet. You know, we are the hopeful elect. You see, the hopeful elect of the Heavenly Father also understands that many are called but few are chosen, meaning that you might be in this truth one day, but the next one you might be a fallout man according to the will of Yahweh Bashmi Rashai. You see, that's why you know we pray that we endure, man. You see, blessed is the man that endure in temptation, all the trials, tribulations, and temptations that we're being put in, you know, all the um, adversities that we endure. You know, I'm going to uh, I'm broaden a little bit about uh, what the scriptures uh, says to be more specific, but it says, For when he is tried, he re shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord Yahweh hath promised to them that love him. <coughs> you see, so that's what we hope for, man. That's what we hope for. Um, let me see. I want to go to Second Esther chapter 7. And also let me look up another scripture. On my other phone. Yes. Um, so this is Second Esther chapter seven, and let me start at verse six. There is also another thing: a city is built, set upon a broad field, and is full of all good things. And this is referring to the kingdom. The city is referring to the kingdom of Yashur Allah. It says the entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall, as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water. And uh, the fire and the water represents the afflictions, the afflictions that were being put in. This is Isaiah chapter 30 in verse 20. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity, and the water of affliction, so the water represents the affliction, yet shall not that teachers be removed into a corner any more, but then I shall see that teacher. So in this day and age, you know, the Heavenly Father is going to make sure that uh, the teachers of our people, the teachers of the children of Israel, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, can be seen, you know, by our people. Uh, and this is happening by way of teaching in the highways and byways. Uh, in the streets, in the cities. Uh, because if we would be residing in buildings, nobody would, you know, be able to, you know, see us um, unless they would be told that we was in that building, you know. Mm. Let me see, what is it? Yeah, so this is Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. So the baptizing uh, goes into the cleansing. Um, this is um, uh, John, the, um, John the Baptist speaking. He said that he would you know, baptize the people with water unto repentance, so basically prepare them beforehand and uh, help them make a decision, you know, to change their lives. But the one that would come after him would be Yahweh Shai. Uh, and he says that Yahweh Shai will baptize us with the Holy Spirit, cleanse us with the understanding of the scriptures, 
but also with fire, which the fire represents the um, the trials, man. The trials and tribulations. <clears throat> Like a, a furnace of affliction. Let me see if I can find it. This is Isaiah 48 and 10. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. So a furnace is an oven which uh, uses heat, a fire, you know, to, to get a process started. So, this might be um, a little bit better precept to understand that the fire represents afflictions. <coughs> Second Ezra chapter 7 and verse 7. The entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall. Like if the, there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water. And like I mentioned already, these are the trials and tribulations set in our life that will come in our life. And... You know, we have to walk that straight path, man. Even though these trials and tribulations are on all sides, man. But the decisions that we make, you know, also are very important, you know, for our walk. Verse 8. And, on, and one only path between them both, even the fire and the water, so small that there could but one man go there at once. So even though we all walk that same path, we all walk our own way. We all have our own afflictions. We all have our own... Um, basically our own destiny that we have to um, to fulfill man verse 9 if this city we now were given unto a man for an inheritance if he never shall pass the danger set before it how shall he receive this inheritance so in order for us to enter into the kingdom you know we need to walk that narrow path that is full of trials tribulations and afflictions that's why it also mentioned in Acts chapter 4, verse 22. Uh, 4 or 5. Much tribulation. Fourteen and twenty-two. So look, yeah, this is Acts chapter fourteen, verse twenty-two, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of the Most High. So this is what is appointed unto us. You know, like Second Ezra chapter seven also says, you know, as as we would read on, um, but I want to go into the book of Ecclesiastes chapter fifteen. Where it says, uh, Sirach chapter 15, and let me see the verse 16. He had set fire and water before thee, stretch forth their hands unto whether thou wilt. Before man is life and death, and whether him like it shall be given him. You see, so. There is a choice that we have in our life. You know, in all the temptations, trials, tribulations that we have, we have a choice, man. Either to make the right decision or the wrong decision. You know, of course, we need to take into consideration the mercy and grace that we have received through our Lord and Savior, how we shy. You see, but there are right and wrong decisions that we need to make. And, of course, we are rehearsing the righteous acts, which the righteous acts are are the right decisions to make according you know to the understanding of the scriptures you know how to act in certain situations how to respond in certain situations you know how to be in certain situations you know but we need to make sure that we you know to the best of our ability apply you know the scriptures man you see so we should be blessed and we should count it joy you know, when we are being put in all these trials, tribulations, and temptations. 
This is Sirach chapter 2 verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. So if we come to serve the Heavenly Father, which we come and do if we enter into this truth, we already have to prepare ourselves that we're going to be tempted. That we're going to be put in situations to try and test us. It says set the heart right. You know, we have to, you know, um, have the right mindset, you know, and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. You know, don't make these hasty decisions. It says cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased in thy last, at the last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable man in the furnace of adversity. So this is our life, man. You know, that furnace of adversity, man. That 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 fire, the cleansing agent, you know, the water of affliction. Believe in him and he will help thee. Order that way you right and trust in him. And that's the mindset that we should have during all these trials and tribulations, man. Verse 7, ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy and go not aside lest ye fall. You know, we should make the right decisions and wait for the Heavenly Father, man. You know, making the wrong decisions. You know, or cause us to fall. It says, Ye that fear the Lord, believe in Him, and your reward shall not fail. Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. You see, that's the mind that we should have. Look at the generations of old and see did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded, or did any abide in His fear and was forsaken, or whom did He ever despise that called upon Him? So, when we go back into the scriptures, look at you know, the men of renown, the men of old, King David, Samuel, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah. Look at those people, you know, Elijah, Moses, uh, Joseph. You know, look at, you know, those individuals, you know, and, 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 and really study their, their, their stories, you know, and learn from those situations. And then we're going to see what, the Heavenly Father, you know, might have in store for us, man, when we are being put in situations. You know, Joseph, you know, he was sold by his brothers to Ishmaelites, man, brought to Egypt, you know, was uh, was made a slave. But eventually he became the second highest man in Egypt, you know, and eventually through him, you know, the children of Israel, you know, had a had a place, you know, to, to stay and, and, and be safe, man, you know. And then, of course, you know, we was put in, in, in bondage, but we was delivered from those situations too, man. You see? So, yeah, with that, I do hope and pray that this video is edifying. And with that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakadash. Double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone who teach and rule well. And Shalom to the sincere Akyam, spread his truth and sincerity. Shalom.